And just let me lay a little foundation for you before we go anywhere. But uh, this morning we were talking about faith. And we, we had the opportunity of looking into Abraham. Amen. The father of faith. You know, the, 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 the word of God says that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. Okay? He is the author and the finisher. But Abraham became the father of faith. He became the one that, that, that started out and, and believed God. You know, what we're sharing this morning, for some of you that weren't here, how God gave him a promise of a son and, and gave it to him when he was 20, uh, 75 years old. And didn't receive that promise till he was a hundred. Imagine, Sarah, Sarah was up there in age. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Sarah was 90 years old when she gave birth to Isaac. Imagine, imagine 25 years they waited for the promise of the father. God gave him a word. He gave him a word. And, and Abraham never wavered from that word. Imagine it was an impossibility. There was no possible way that he could have a son. And there was no possible way that Sarah could give him any children. But when God says it's going to happen, there's nothing that can reverse that. Are you with me? God's word is more powerful than anything in this life. And he waited for that promise. And, and, and imagine, and I'm saying this to you because we're going to get into something here tonight, but most people... When, when, when they're going through stuff or they're believing God for something, most Christians waver. They're always going into their emotions and their feelings and their senses and, and they're finding reasons why, why it's not going to happen. And, and they, go all, I mean, they go through all kinds of trips and, and, then, and then they don't get what God has for them. Look, look up here at me for a moment. You cannot receive, listen to me, you cannot receive what God has given to you or told you you could have if you waver. You cannot bring in with a natural mind what only can be brought in with a spiritual mind. Are you with me? You, you've got to believe God or you're going to believe your emotions. Your emotions will always speak to you all the time. They'll give you pictures. It'll give you a technicolor. You know, you have a movie right there. You have a big screen. The big screen TV didn't come out right away. They're not ahead of God. God, you have one built in. Every time something comes your way every time a problem comes a situation a crisis or something the first thing that happens to us is that man that 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 big screen tv goes into right away goes on and and we look at it and we believe it and then we get around other christians that have that big tv on too and they feed us their stuff how many understand what i'm saying to you and God cannot give you what he wants to give you like that. You're not going to get it like that. Abraham showed us something. And we're going to see it in a moment again. Not in Abraham, but in someone else. But you're going to see how our faith really works. 
how, how God operates. When God says something, it happens. Are you with me? Nothing can change it. Nothing. The only thing that aborts the promise from your life is you. You're the one that goes into all these kind of deals. You go through all kinds of trips. You think all the stuff. I mean, you go through some heavy stuff. And then, and then you say, well, I don't know why God don't help us. Well, he's been trying to, but you put blockades on him. How many understand what I'm saying to you? Abraham never swayed. That's what the Bible says. Hope against hope, he said. In other words, faith and hope fought. Hope is future tense. Faith is now. Are you with me? So, so imagine this. Faith and hope fought. Hope was trying to change his mind. And faith won. Say faith won. You know, there, there, there was a man one time, there was a man one time that went to heaven. And does that mean, Pastor, I won't go to heaven? Well, I don't know if you're saved. If you're saved, you're going to go to heaven. But listen to me, you're going to go beat up. This man went to heaven one day, and, and St. Peter showing him around everywhere, all over heaven. And then he sees this room way over there locked. And, and he tells Peter, what's over there? What's in that room? And Peter says, oh, you don't want to see that. Let's go. I'll, let me show you another part of heaven. And he says, no, I want to see that. He says, no, 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 you don't want to see that. Let's go. Let's go. And he kept insisting. So Peter said, are you sure you want to see that? He says, Yeah. All right, let's go, he says. So he opens the door, he unlocks it, and takes the man inside, and they're walking around, and there were, there were shelves and shelves of boxes and things all over that place. And he's walking through there, and he looks, and he sees his name. And he says, what's my name doing in that box? Peter says, well, those are the things God wanted to give you while you were on earth. But you just wouldn't believe. Anybody home? How, how many want to have everything God has for you? Amen. How, how many really want everything God intends to give you? You're going you're gonna to battle. We all battle. We all battle the enemy. We have an adversary. And, and, and his, his technique, his technique of fighting us is through lies and deception. That's the only thing he can use. He can't use anything else. He'll use a lie, and he'll try to deceive you through that lie. And if you grab that lie, then, man, you're going for a ride with the devil. It's like taking a roller coaster ride. Has anybody ever gone on a roller coaster ride? Amen? I don't want to take no roller coaster ride. We took a bunch of children one time to Elitches, the old Elitches. And there was a little girl who wanted to get on that roller coaster so bad. And they wouldn't let her on unless, unless there was an adult with her. And she kept telling me, Pastor, please, please. And I said, oh, Lord, man, oh, my God. <laughs> and finally, I said, all right, I'll go. So I got on with her, man, and they put me in the front car with her. And, and here I was, man, and we're going up, you know, and I'm looking at her, and I'm thinking to myself, poor little girl, my God. And we're going like this, and all of a sudden, shh, like this, and I'm yelling and screaming, and she's laughing at me.
You know, when, when you take a ride with the enemy, when you, when you let the enemy play with your emotions and your feelings, it's like going on that roller coaster ride. One moment, man, you want to believe. The next moment, man, the picture's so big, man, you have no faith, man. The next minute, you're, you're, you're believing somebody's opinion and somebody's stuff given to you, man, and you're over here like, man, you don't know what's going on in life no more. Faith is sure. Say, faith is sure. Amen. And, 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 and I want you to understand something. If you write anything down, I want you to write this down. Faith only works in God's Word. Faith in the Word of God. You, you put your faith in other things, it's not going to work. You've got to have your faith in God's Word. Say God's Word. And you know I get a kick out of Christians because Christians will all say, well, I believe, I believe, I believe, man. Come on, I believe. I, uh, and then when they go through a crisis, man, you look at them and you say, I thought you believed. Because their actions show different. And how many know your, your thoughts produce your actions? And what you're thinking comes out on the outside. Anybody home? Okay. So I, I, want, to, I want to start with this. I want to give you this. Let's read this with me first. In chapter 10 of Hebrews from verse 37 and 38. And we'll go maybe to 39. Look, look at this. Look what he says. For still... A little while, a very little while, at, and the coming one will come and he will not delay. How many know that's Jesus? He's coming back. He's coming back, church. I'm telling you, all, everything points to that. Amen. He's coming back. Look at verse 38. But the just, say the just, the just shall live by faith. My righteous servants shall live by his conviction, respecting man's relationship to God and divine things, and holy fervor, born of faith, and conjoined with it. And if he draws back and shrinks in fear, my soul has no delight or, or pleasure in him. Now this is God speaking. Now look what he's saying. Draws back from what? Listen to me. From faith. You're saved through what? By faith. Everything you're going to get, everything you're going to come, come in contact with from God is going to come by faith. So, so imagine, he says, he says here, but the just shall live by faith. Now I want to give you something tonight that the Lord gave me the other day that I want you to check out. I want you to see it with me. We have a tendency of being so judgmental. And we have a tendency of, 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 of judging others. All right? Are you with me? So I want you to see this with me. If you're saved, if, you're, if you've been forgiven, and you're washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, your, your standing with God does not depend on you. That doesn't mean you go out there and, 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 and live like hell. That means you try to live for God. Are you with me? I said, are you with me? The Holy Spirit lives in you, and He gives you the ability to live for Christ. But listen to me. Your, 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 your right standing with God does not, mean, does not have anything to do with you. It has everything to do with Jesus. Jesus gave his life for you. Come on, is there anybody here? He took all your sins. He took all your, your everything you've ever done wrong. Every word you've ever said wrong. Everything about you. He took it on the cross. Anybody home? And he saved you. You couldn't save yourself. He brought you into salvation. Are you with me? Now, now listen to me. Some of us have believed the enemy. And we believe that, man, I failed. I just can't get back up. I just can't make it. I just can't. No, listen, that's a lie. Don't believe the devil. I'm telling you right now. 
Shut your emotions off. Believe the word of God. Are you with me? Believe God's word. If you've come short, if you've fallen into sin, if you've, if you've gotten away from God, get back to God. Let him wash you with the blood. Let him cleanse you. Are you with me, church? Is there anybody home? Let him cleanse you. Now, I want to say this. I'm saying this because I want to say this to you. Your right standing has nothing to do with you. You couldn't get yourself right. He got you right. He sacrificed his life for you. All right? Are you with me? Now, now hear this. When Adam and Eve were in the garden, when they were walking there, this is why you can, you can believe God by faith. This is why you can walk by faith. This is why you can do what God says. You can't do it any other way. Listen to me. If you, if you, if you messed up if you, and you want to stay in that, in that state, you're going to be like the ones that draw back. You're going to go backwards instead of forward. That's why, that's why they call people backsliders. That's where they got that word. Is there anybody home? When you know your life, something's wrong with it, the best place to fix it is with the one that died for you. Is there anybody here? All right. So look at this. When Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden, God would come down every evening or every cool of the day, the Bible says, and would fellowship with them. They'd walk through the garden, and God was there, and Adam and Eve would go, and they would talk, and they would fellowship. Anybody home? What an awesome thing, wasn't it? I mean, to just be able to walk with God. Well, look at this. God has come down. The Holy Spirit came and lives in you. Are you saved? Who's saved here? If you're not saved, we're making an altar call tonight. You need to get saved because you can't get to heaven without salvation. You got to be saved. Your name must be written in the Lamb's Book of Life if you're going to go to heaven. If it's not written there, then you need to get it in there. You need to get saved. Okay, are you with me? God came down over, over 2,000 years ago by the Holy Spirit. Listen to me. For everyone that's gotten born again, say born again. And I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. He, 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 you know, you, you became born again. He came and indwelled your life. God, the same God that walked with Adam and Eve in the garden, lives in you. Do you understand that? L look at this. Look at this. Go to Romans with me. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Are you with me tonight? You, do, do you like beating yourself up? My God! Look at this. Therefore, since we are justified, do you know what the word justified means? The word justified means you've been pardoned. Say pardoned. Anything about you has been wiped out. Anything you've ever done in life has been wiped out. It's no longer there. Are, are you with me? Unless you go backwards, forsake faith in God, and go backwards and go back to what you were doing, the only way you can, the only way you can make that right is to get back to the cross. Is there anybody here? And make it right with God. But if you're walking with God tonight, listen to me, if you're walking with the Lord, if you're living for Jesus Christ tonight, you have been justified, amen, acquitted, look at that, acquitted, declared righteous, and giving and given a right standing with God. 
Oh, give him praise. I said, give the Lord praise. I'm going somewhere with this. You, you, you have been justified. You have been cleansed. You have been pardoned. I, I remember one time when I moved from here to New Mexico back in the 70s. I went out there because I wanted to help my brother. And when, when I got there, this is the very first day I got there. Finished putting my stuff away and all kinds of stuff. And my brother went home and his wife and everybody. I heard the voice of the Spirit of God. And the Holy Spirit told me, you moved out of my will. He says, I didn't bring you here. So, so look at this. For five years, I'm in the desert, all right? Seeing rabbits and all kinds of stuff. And I'm praying. I'm getting along with God, man, three, four times a day. And I was there for about two and a half years. Or five years. I was there since 75 to 1980. Are you with me? And I'm praying. I'm saying, God, I want to get back into your perfect will. I want to get back into your will. I'm praying, 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 I'm praying. And I'm asking God, God, man, you don't know how many tears I shed. You don't know how, how much I cried out to God. And one day I went to a, uh, I went to a, uh, uh, they were having this convention or this, this, this huge uh, crusade at the college there, and I went. I went there because I just wanted to hear the word, I just wanted to be there. And I was sitting in the middle of about two or three thousand people. And I'm waiting for the service to start. But when this man walks out from the back, he walks out and he's looking around. And I saw him. I'm sitting down there and I, I see him. He's walking around the stage and he's looking around and he's going all over. Then he climbs down and he's walking up and down the aisles and he's looking like this. And, and I didn't know, but all of a sudden when he saw me, he says, I, I need to see you. And he pulled me out. And this is what he told me. He said, when I was praying back there, he said, God showed me your face. He said, he said, God gave me a word for you. God told me to tell you that there's nothing. He sees nothing on your record. There's nothing you've done wrong. You've been asking God to go back into his will. And he says, God says he has nothing there. It's all wiped away. Is there anybody here tonight? He said it's all been wiped away, he says. And God says he's going to use you in the gospel. So, so listen to me. This is part of that, that word that came. Me standing here tonight. That's part of it. Are, are you with me, church? This is why it's so important. Listen to me. The devil wants to keep you back, holding you back, moving backwards instead of forward. He, he wants to keep you believing that you messed up so bad you can't get back. Are you with me? But listen, that's not true. If you are born again tonight, if you are saved and washed by the blood of Jesus, you are in right standing just like Adam and Eve were when they were walking in the Garden of Eden. Is there anybody home tonight? I said, is there anybody home tonight? You're not in the Garden, but you're just as right as they were. Look what it says. Therefore, since we are justified, say justified, acquitted, declared righteous, and given a right standing with God, through what? Through faith. Let us grasp the fact that we have the peace of reconciliation to hold and to enjoy. Are you with me? Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Anybody home tonight? I said, are you with me tonight? Okay, now look up here at me. Because you see... 
Only those that have been justified can really claim or grab hold of the word by faith. The natural man, the natural man cannot understand the spiritual things of God. That's why you got to get saved. To some of you sitting here that, that aren't saved, man, you're saying, this guy's talking Chinese. See? But in reality, it's not that I'm talking Chinese. It's that your spiritual senses have not been opened. When, I, was, when I, was, I first came out from California out here, my brother was a pastor. I went to live with him. And this girl in the church came to me and gave me a Bible. It was the first time when they started doing the translations, changes in the translations. And it was a reach out Bible. And she gave me this Bible and I took it and I tried to read it. But it bored me. It just totally bored me. Because I was dead spiritually and mentally. I could not grasp, I could not comprehend what God was saying. Are you with me, church? But when I became born again, when the Lord saved me, my understanding was open. My spiritual life came alive. My spirit came alive. Are you with me, church? All of a sudden, man, I, I got a Bible. The Lord said, you got to buy a Bible. So I went and bought a little New Testament. And I began to read that little New Testament, man. And that thing, man, just, the words just would jump out at me, man. And, man, I couldn't get enough of that Bible. Are you with me? Because my spiritual senses were open. See, my, my dead spirit became alive. Are you with me, church? I'm going somewhere with this tonight. That's why you and I that are born again tonight, we can stand by faith and see God do what He said He would do. Is there anybody here tonight? You can grab the promises of God just like Abraham. When Abraham was told, you're going to have a son, and he was 75 years old, and it was impossible for him, but he could stand. Are you with me, church? Because the Bible says that through faith, he had a right standing with God. Are you with me, church? Hallelujah. And he was able to believe God. And even though he was 100 years old, he had a son. Is there anybody here? It don't matter if your situation is impossible. It don't matter what it looks like. It don't matter what anybody tells you. Listen to me tonight. God has the final say-so. He's got the word. Oh, if you're going to give him praise, give him praise. Look at this. I want you to see this with me. Okay, are you with me tonight? Yes. Amen. I, I, I want you, to, I want you to, to write this down. I want you to see this with me. Amen. Because there's nothing, nothing impossible. Look at this. You don't have to pray for faith. Look at this. Because, listen, because His promises can never be broken. He's given you a measure of faith. You got faith. He says, I've dealt faith out to you. I've given you a measure of faith. Is there anybody home? I believe that God sometimes lets us go through crisis, lets us go through problems and situations, sickness and all kinds of stuff. He allows us to go through to put our faith to work. He wants you to see how powerful He is, what He wants to do for you. Is there anybody home? In the time to come, I want to tell you, in the near future, gas may go up. Man, the, 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 the electric bill may go up. All kinds of things are going to go up. Your taxes is going to go up and all kinds of things. And I want to tell you something. God is greater than all those things. God is greater. Faith is greater than all those things. God will move for the church no matter what, are you with me, church? If you and I can believe God, His promises, 
As long as the rapture hasn't taken place, I'm telling you tonight, we are still under the dispensation of grace. As long as we're not out of this world, you can still stand on the Word of God. It's not going to change. His promises will never be broken. They cannot be broken. If they're broken, He stops being God. Come on, is there anybody here tonight? He is God. Say, He is God. The problem God has with people is that they, they go into all the stuff, they go into all the feelings, and they're like, oh, I don't want to do that, I'm crazy, and look at that, and look at that again, another thing, another thing, another thing. Stop it. Stand on the Word. Stand on the Word of God. Come on, stand on the Word of God. Say it with me, i got to stand on the Word of God. Can you imagine Abraham? Abraham did not let his feelings and emotions govern him. They're real. They're alive. They're a part of you. They're a part of your human nature. You got five senses. You got a mind that's so powerful, and it's your intellect, and it's connected to your feelings and your emotions, and it's it's connected to your will. Are you with me, church? And that thing there, the devil uses big time. It robs you more than anything else. It robs you. It keeps you from receiving what God has for you. Is there anybody here tonight? Say, I want everything God has. You, you got you to gotta change. You got you to gotta change this thing. You got to believe the Word. I said, you got to believe the Word. Look at this. You don't have to pray for faith because His promises cannot be broken. Once He has said something, that's what it is. The Bible says that His Word is settled in heaven. It will never change. Nothing in the world can change what he said. Man can go and write a new Bible. They're writing a Bible tonight that has her instead of him. They're writing a Bible, they call it the social Bible. Is there anybody here tonight? They're also trying to write another Bible that says we coexist, that everybody's after the same God. Listen, they can do whatever they want to, but I'm going to stand on the original Word of God because I know that there's nothing that can change. Now the Zippo, whatever God's, whatever proceeded out of the mouth of God, He said, man shall not live by bread alone. You will not exist only by the natural thinking. He said, or your emotions, or, or your intellect. He said, listen to me. He said, but you shall live by every word, every word, every word that has proceeded out of the mouth of God. You hold every word in your hands that has proceeded out of the mouth of God. You have it in your hands, hallelujah, and nothing can change it. And it's more powerful than any problem, more powerful than any addiction, more powerful than any sin, more powerful than any devil, more powerful than anything that exists. Are you with me tonight? Hallelujah. He's a mighty God. We don't serve a tin soldier God. I'm telling you tonight, we serve the creator of heaven and earth. He spoke it and it happened. Is there anybody with me tonight? So I want you to go with me. Look at this. Luke 137. Are you with me tonight? For with God, nothing is ever impossible, and no word from God, no word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment. What a powerful word, church. Are you with me tonight? I said, are you with me tonight? I will tell you something, church. If I were you, 
I'd go get me an amplified Bible. I'm promoting amplified Bible. Some of your Bibles don't even have part of that. And you're looking and saying, well, Allah says it's not impossible. No, you got to get the full meaning. Say the full meaning. Look what it says. For with God, nothing, 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 nothing. Underline that N, nothing, nothing. Make that letter, that N red. Nothing, nothing is ever impossible. And no word. No word from God shall be without power. That Bible you hold is mighty. There's nothing, man, my God, everything you need right there. Forget calling your friend. Call God. Hey, lift him up. Put my mic up, brother. You're killing me. No word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment. No word. You know what keeps it from being fulfilled? Go like this and give God a smile. Nosotros. Abraham stood, imagine, 25 years, and, and I can imagine Sarah laughing. She was laughing in the tent. Man, this angel blew it, saying, I'm going to have a kid. And she's laughing. Imagine. And God knew it. He said, Abraham, how come she's laughing at me? Abraham tried to play it off. Oh, no, she does that all the time. She laughs in her sleep. <laughs> Can you imagine the devil trying to attack Abraham for 25 years to change his mind and heart about faith? It don't take us but an hour and we're already indifferent. We start going through a little problem and man, we're crashed. Huh? I'm telling you, I see Christians all the time that you see dancing up here. Man, and they're, ah, and they're speaking in tongues and crying out. I see them. And then a problem comes, and the fire goes out, and everything goes out, and the emotions click in, and they're, they're looking for pills, and they're looking for this, and, and Valium, and, and... You know what that is? That's flesh. That's all flesh. It's nothing to do with faith. It has nothing to do with faith. God moves by faith. Faith, 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 faith. Grab faith. He moves by faith. Anybody here? So, so let me take you to this. Let me take you to this. Praise God. Go with me. Praise the Lord. Say this with me. Faith, Faith. is energized, energized with love. love. Go with me to 2 Timothy. Chapter 3. Now look up here. Once you get that, once you find it, look at this. The devil has always tried to imitate God. 
always. Remember that the devil, when he was in heaven with the Lord, he wanted to be God. He says, I'm going to ascend to the highest. I'm going to be served. I'm going to be worshipped. He wanted to dethrone God. Can you imagine a created being wanting to throw God that's existed with no, no beginning and no end? He wanted to dethrone God. He wanted to be worshipped. He wanted to be followed. He wanted to be served. It, it, it's to a point, listen to me, where, where God calls the devil, look at this, the God of this world. That's what, that's what the Bible says. That Satan is the God of this world. The natural. Say the natural. That's why he's able, amen, when Adam and Eve fell in the garden, Adam and Eve went from light to darkness. They were not born in darkness and then came into the light like we do. They were created in light and when they messed up they went into darkness and all the human race was born with a sinful nature. Are you with me church? Don't look at me like with a halo over here. You, we all were born. Pastor Ray was born with a sinful nature all right? And through that nature, he's had the world bowing down to him, serving him, worshiping him. Are you with me? Now look at this. His whole plan is for destruction. It all leads to death. God's way leads to life and everlasting life with Jesus Christ. Okay, are you with me? So, so look at this. Look at this. I want you to see this because when, 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 when you're not born again, and even when you're born again, you've got to walk in right standing with God. You've got to walk with the love of Jesus. Anybody here? You, you cannot walk. Listen, you, your faith, your faith will be hindered if you don't walk in love. God's love. And we, we, we misplace it. We, we misunderstand it. That's how the devil has managed to keep many of us from getting what we need to get. Okay, look at this. I want, I want to read it to you. But understand this that in the last days will come, set in perilous times of great stress and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear. It's, it's coming, it's, 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 it's already here. There's a change that has taken place within the body of Christ. Are you with me? And, and, and listen to me, and they have let go of God's love and they've embraced a self-centered love. Love is always the beginning source. It's always the trunk. If We're not going there tonight, but if you can write it down in Galatians, amen, in Galatians chapter 5, I think it's one of the, verse 22 or something, you'll find there where the fruits of the Spirit, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, the first fruit is love. From love comes everything else. Peace, joy, kindness, long-suffering, faith, faithfulness, temperance, self-control. From love. Are you with me? These fruits operate through the first one, which is love. It's the trunk. Me están entendiendo. The same thing here. 
The same thing here. The enemy has always wanted to imitate God. Always. I've, I've seen people try to imitate. I've seen the devil use people to speak in tongues, and it wasn't God. I've seen the devil prophesy, and it wasn't God. Anybody home? Okay, so look at this. Look at this. Let's go to the next verse. Look at this. For people will, will be lovers of self. There we go with that love. Lovers of self. God's love is different. God's love is a giving love. It's a sacrificial love. Is there anybody home today? God's love never is self-centered. It's never self-centered. God's love for all. The Bible says, for God loved the world, he gave his only begotten son out of love. Love the love of God will never be self-centered. Self-love, listen to me, self-love is, is a love that takes and takes and takes and never, never gives back. A self-love becomes a selfish love. Selfishness is the root of all evil. Is there anybody home? Selfishness becomes just me. What I want, what I need, what I think. Anybody home? That's a selfish love. It's selfish. Selfishness is the root of all evil. Out of self-love, look at this. Out of self-love, look what happens. For people will be lovers of self and utterly self-centered. And from there come the other roots. Lovers of money and aroused by an inordinate greedy desire for wealth, proud and arrogant and contemptuous bolsters. They will be abusive, blasphemous, scoffing, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, and profane. Let's go on. Let's go on up there. They will be without natural human affection, callous and inhuman, relentless, admitting of no truce or appeasement. They will be slanderers, false accusers, troublemakers, temperate and loose in morals and conduct, uncontrolled and fierce haters of good. Let's go on. They will be treacherous, betrayers, rash, and inflate it with self-conceit. They will be lovers of sensual pleasures and vase, vain amusements more than and rather than lovers of God. God's love is different. God's love is different. Are you with me? God's love allows you to love God. You can't love God with a natural love. You, you got to have a supernatural love. You got to have a gape love flowing through you. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit has poured God's love into our hearts. He's poured it in there. Are you with me, church? Is there anybody home tonight? Why does, listen to me, why does the devil want to take your love God's love from you and have you replace it with selfish love. Because selfish love will never operate in faith. It can't. Is there anybody home? It produces all the natural elements. But it doesn't produce what it takes to move in faith. Only the love of Jesus fires you up to believe God for anything. Are you with me tonight? Is there anybody home? Am I here by myself? Listen, I know what we got to do right now. Lift your hands up. Say, Lord, 
I surrender this selfishness, this self-love of mine. I bring it under the blood of Jesus. I break the power of it by the power of the Holy Ghost. You're, you're looking at me like, you're telling on yourself. Selfish love will never operate. Are you with me? Listen to me. Faith feeds off of God's love. And love feeds off of faith. You can't operate in faith without love. If you don't have the love of God flowing through you, it's not going to work. Anybody home? I said, is there anybody home? Okay, so, so let's go on. Let's go on because you're looking at me kind of funny. How many want everything God has for you? How many of you know you're going to have to operate in faith? You're, you're going to have to learn how to walk in faith. Faith with God. You, you know what I do, church? Let me tell you something. If, if, if you think you get hit by the devil, you don't know yet. I get hit many times a day. You know what I do? I take it to God right away. I, I want to walk clean. Say clean. I don't want to walk. Listen, I don't want to walk in the flesh. I want God to move. I want to see God bless you. And if I'm going to see God bless you, I've got to walk the way God said to walk. Is there anybody home? So go with me. Go with me. We're go we got to go somewhere with it because you're looking at me kind of funny. So selfishness. Just because I want this. Well, you check it out. You go home and open your dictionary. <laughs> Amen. It produces a lot of junk. Look at this. Look at this. That's why you have to be born again. In other words, you're, you're, you're made over. S 2 Corinthians 5.17, we're not going there. It says this. If you are in Christ Jesus, you are a new creation. He says, and behold, all old things, all your past, everything about you is done away with. It's gone. Are you with me? It's over. Is there anybody home? I said, is there anybody home? So, so what the devil does is he works at getting you because, listen, we, we don't, listen, let's look up here at me. Don't be mad at me. If you are, you got to get glad, bro, if you're going to go to heaven. That's all I can say. If you're going to meet Jesus and not the Antichrist. Now, now look at this. Look at this. Look at this. The problem that, that, that the church has had and that the, the Lord has with the church is that the, the body of Christ has wanted to make selfish love. They've wanted to believe that's God's love. Let me come over here, man. They're looking at me kind of mean, Sister Terry. My God. <laughs> imagine, imagine this. We live with a self-centered love, a selfish love. And, and the devil has told us that's God's love flowing through you. And we believe it. So we've done nothing to change it. 
But it's not the love of God. That's not the love of God. That's the kind of love the enemy uses. Anybody home? I said, anybody home? So look at this. Look at this. I'm going somewhere with this. Amen. I'll talk to myself if I have to. Look, look, go with me to Matthew chapter 24. Okay? We're going to read verse 11 and 12 and 13. But we're going to read verse 11 first, and then we'll go to 12, because I want you to see this. I imagine that, 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 that Timothy talks about the last days, the pressure there would be, the stress there would be. Now look at this. Look at this. The devil working hard using other people that claim to be Christians to try to detour you from the love of God to operate in a selfish love. Anybody home? Because you cannot have faith in God with all that junk flowing from you. It's impossible. Anybody home? So, so look at this, look at this. And many false prophets, when he talks about in the New Testament about prophets, he's talking about preachers, all right? It says, and many false preachers will rise up and deceive, now look at this, and deceive and lead many into error. That error is, is heavy. Look, one, an error can cause you to lose everything. One, one error can cause you to lose it all. One, one thing that you believe that's totally out of, out of context with God can cause you to lose everything that God has for you. And that's why the devil has worked so hard to get you to believe that self-love is God's love. It's not. We saw what self-love produces. God don't produce that stuff. God produces love, peace, joy, temperance, kindness. Huh? Anybody home? So look at that. Many individuals being led wrong. And listen to me. There are many, many false preachers preaching false things leading people astray, making them believe that that's real, and it's not real. And you know why they can lead people astray? Because people don't look it up. Are you with me? So look what happens out of error. Okay, out of error. Look what happens. Go, go to verse 12. And the love... Didn't say self-love, selfishness, or any other, other stuff would grow cold. It says, and the love of the great body of people. You know what love he's talking about? The love of Jesus. The love of God that is deposited. Listen to me. When you are born again, when you come to Christ and he saves you, he pours his love into you. That's why immediately after you're saved, you want to save the world. Are you with me, church? Right away, you want to tell everybody, and everybody's cussing you out, and, and you're still telling everybody, and you don't care what they say, and, and that's the love of God. Are you with me? So, but look at this. And the love of the great body of people will grow cold. That word cold means it will become indifferent. It will switch. It'll turn and become selfish. And that's what the enemy's been working on. He doesn't want you to have real faith. He doesn't want you to be like Abraham standing on the word. Are you with me? He doesn't want you to receive what God has for you. Because every time you stand and God gives you something, your faith grows. Faith feeds your love. 
Love feeds your faith and you're growing. That measure of faith stops being a measure. It begins to grow into a big tree. Is there anybody here? I said, is there anybody home? Amen. So the devil works so hard to get you to be cold in the love of God. He doesn't want you cold in your selfishness. He wants you cold in God's love. Because it's God's love that fuels your faith. When you first came to the Lord, if I was to ask you, man, do you remember the experience you had? Man, you know what you said? Oh, man, it was powerful. Man, I remember, man, they couldn't shut me up. Man, I was telling the world about Jesus. Why? Because you weren't selfish. Now you don't tell nobody about nothing because it's all about you. Say, say with me, something's happened in my heart. Something's grown cold. I've become indifferent. I got to preach the word. I got to tell you the truth. We become indifferent. Are you with me? The love of God, listen, everything God does for you and me in this world is not so that we can become indifferent or selfish. It's so that we can reach the world. So we can expand ourselves for God. If your daughter comes in and your sons come in, your children come in to God, sister, guess what? Their friends that are connected to them, they all start coming in. Is there anybody here? The love of God. Say the love of Jesus. Flowing and moving. Faith. Faith alive. Faith alive. Faith alive. Man, when you got a problem, no, I know God's going to see me through. God is with me. God said he would. Go, well, I'm not going to believe different. Man, I believe God. You're there, man. Boom, boom, boom. With the love of God flowing through you. But man, let the devil get you to become indifferent. Let somebody get a hold of you and start telling you, oh, man, dude, you don't need to be all that excited right now. Just cool it. Chill out. By the time you know it, you ain't saying nothing to nobody. Let me come on this side. Oh, Jesus, we're going to have a good, good altar call. I, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know that, listen, if we were flowing in the love of God, man, we'd have this place packed. We've been so self-centered. We've, we've, the, the Lord said, man, I'm going to help you with every one of your needs, but I got to get you to climb out of there because you know what? We don't climb out of there How's your family going to know God? How's, what's going to happen? Everything Jesus does is to reach this world. Every miracle he gives you by faith. Every st everything he does for you by faith is to impact someone else. It's to impact somebody else. Are you with me? It's to do a work in somebody else's life. So look at this. And the love of the great body of people will grow cold because of the multiplied lawlessness and iniquity. We're talking about all the stuff that selfish love produces. It produces it. Anybody home? Look, look up here at me. Now, would you give me a Colgate smile? Put your guns away. Besides that, look at all the angels I got right behind me, man. They're, they're targeting you. <laughs> I was witnessing, I was witnessing to Jesse's brother, I mean to uh, Edmund's brother, Jesse. And he got so bad at me, he was a Catholic. Lost Catholic. He got so mad at me, but God had told me, talk to him for me. Tell him about me. We were working together in this boxcar, and I started telling him about Jesus, man. He got so mad at me, man. He says, if I want to hear about God, I'll go to church. And he walks out. Man. Later, he told me, he says, I wanted to grab you so bad, he said, but there was something that's just in the way that wouldn't let me go through. <laughs> uh, 
Anybody home? So, so look at this. Look at verse 13. But he who endures, he who don't give it up. To the end will be saved. Give what up? Your love and your faith. Say love and faith. Because love and faith feed off each other. God's love and faith go hand in hand. They're a couple. Say it with me, they're a couple. I hope you're getting something from this. I, I, pray, I pray you're getting something from this. I, I pray that, that the Holy Spirit, even if you're sitting there with your teeth grinding and I, I pray the Holy Spirit will drag you if he has to to the altar and you say, help me! But I love her, but I don't love her. No, 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 you're still bootlegged. Spiritual, spiritually bootlegged. You got to love everybody. Say everybody. Oh, give the Lord praise. You know the ones that are clapping are the ones that, that, that need love. Hey, give him a big praise. You, you, need, you need to read chapter 13 of, of 1 Corinthians and, and find out about the love of God. Because you know what the love of God says? You know what that says about the love of God? It says, the love of God, right there, it says, love does not desire its own. It's not selfish. Anybody home? Say, say Lord, change me. Okay, go with me. Go with me. I, man, you made me stay on that thing for a long time, man. I, that, that, you know what? It, it, I, it's, like, it's like getting a chisel and, and chiseling away. L listen, do you know how hard it is to try to get a spiritual message into carnal minds that are so self-centered? I love myself. Huh? It's one of the hardest things to do. I pray the Holy Spirit get the hammer. The Bible says the, the Holy Spirit's like a hammer. I pray He gets a hammer and breaks that heart, shatters that heart, and says, now, now I can come in. Now I can do the work. Mark, are you with me tonight? Is only the homeboys with me? Man. Lord Jesus. Mark chapter 2. Do you want to know what it is? Do you want to know what faith is? How many want to know what faith is? How many want to know what faith and love together is? Now, I want you to write this down. Faith is never moved. Real faith is never moved. But real faith moves things. That's why he said you can speak to that mountain and it shall move. He says you can, you can command that sycamore tree to be plucked up out of its roots and be cast into the sea and it will obey you. Faith. Say faith. faith. Are you with me? Anybody home? Faith is never moved, but faith moves things. All right. Let's read that. And Jesus, having returned to Capernaum, after some days, it was rumored that about that he was in the house. It was probably Peter's house, they say. Okay, so let's read this. Let's go on. And so many people gathered together there that there was no longer room for them. 
I mean, it was so packed. There were like sardines in there, and they were hanging out the door and the windows and everything. It was so many that nobody else could get in there. All right? Now, look at this. Not even around the door, and he was discussing their feelings and emotions. The word. La palabra. Say la, say la palabra. All right? Now, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. And they came bringing a paralytic. They came bringing a, let, let me have, let me have, let me have you come over here. Are you, are, do you have a bad back? No? Come over here. Come over here, brother. You look young and strong. Hallelujah. Let me get somebody. Paul, come on here. Let me, let me get so, somebody else. Uh, uh, Antonio, come on here. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me get one more. Let me get one more. I need one more. I need one more. But you got a broken hand, brother. We're going to pray God heal that. This brother right here, I don't want your hand messed up. We're praying for it tonight. It's going to get healed. Look at this. Four guys. Who's the smallest one? I think Antonio's the smallest one. Uh, okay, I want you to lay down, brother. It don't matter who. A paralytic. No movement, nothing. And here's four individuals that had just been born again. Man, they're excited about Jesus. And they see this guy way on the other side of town. It wasn't just around the block. You know, how many know it's never just around the block when you deal with Jesus? Huh? Get one leg, you get another leg, you get one arm, he gets another arm. And listen to me, I want you to go like that, like that, come down this place and go again. And then come up the stairs and come back down this way without dropping him. Remember, you're on fire. Okay, pick him up, pick him up, pick him up. He's, he's light. He's only about 500 pounds. Oh, look at that. They're grabbing his chon, is it? I mean, his belt. <laughs> My God. Ah, brother, forgive me, Antonio. <laughs> now, 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 let's go back to the word. They're, they're walking, they're walking. Imagine, they're coming, they're coming. They, 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 they know where they got to go. Are you with me? What happened? Did they drop in? Man, brother. Oh, these guys, these guys need some spiritual energy. You, you guys going to have to just go up there and come back down because you guys won't handle another round. Uh, up, 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 go up, go up that way. Yeah, at least go one more round this way. Come on. Bring him this way, then come down. Don't worry, Antonio. We'll pray for you. You're the paralytic. There's a miracle for you. Okay, lay him down. 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 Now look at this. Now look at this. Wait, you guys wait right there. You guys wait right there. Go back. Go back to the word. Go back to the word. You stay right there, guys. Look. They, they came, look at this, they came bringing a paralytic to him who had been picked up and was being carried by four men, supposed to be men, four men, okay, by four men, all right, now look at this, and look at this, and when they couldn't, could not get into the place in front of Jesus, because of the throng, they dug through the roof 
above him. Now carry him back up there. Get, get it, carry him back up there. Don't go ahead and sit there. I can only pray for half of him tonight. All right, lay him down. Lay him down. Now look, look. Grab, grab, grab a few of these, throw them out there. Grab a few, throw them out there. They're taking the roof apart. Come on. They, they, they didn't have hard roofs like they do today. These were, these were remember, this was 2,000 years ago. Throw them, throw them, throw them, throw them. You're getting the roof apart. You're turning the roof apart. Okay, man. You guys go sit down now. Stay right there, brother. Thank you, brothers. Now, now look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. They gave you a workout. Huh? You lost about 10 pounds there, bro. Look at this. Look at this. And when they could not get him get him to a place in front of Jesus because of the throng. They dug through the roof. That wasn't even their home. Imagine what faith will do. Love and faith in action. Love caring for someone else that they saw thrown over there, a paralytic, and they picked him up we're going to go see Jesus. Let's take him with us. He needs a miracle. We believe God will heal him. He's, he can do anything. Are you with me? They're operating in love, and they pick him up, and they're going, and they get there, and it's so packed, they can't get in. And, and one of them says, let's go on top of the roof. It's not our house anyway. Let's break it up. Let's tear it up by faith. Look at this. And when they had, look at this, and they dug through the roof above him, above Jesus. And when they had scooped out an opening through all the shingles, they let, you guys could use them when you come to the altar. Oh, give me some love, Lord. Come on, you can use those. And when they had scooped out an opening, they let down the thickly padded quilt or mat upon which the paralyzed man lay. <clears throat> Somebody up there paralyzed. Oh, change it. Verse 6. Ah! Okay. Now some of the scribes, nope, nope, you skipped. And when Jesus saw their faith, their love and faith operating together. It wasn't about them. Picked him up, took him over there, man. It was so packed. They said, what are we going to do? Let's go up on the roof. They're handing him up there, man. Pushing him up, throwing him up. He's still there. Throwing him up on the roof. And look at this. And when Jesus saw their faith, what did he see? Look at this. They tore the roof. Faith, look at this. Faith is never moved, but faith moves things. Faith removes obstacles and hindrances. Come on, is there anybody here? Faith refuses to quit. They said, they, they could have just stood on the front door and said, well, we tried. Throw them down. They almost did that. Huh? <laughs> they could have done that. But they were so energized with love and faith that they said, we're going to make a way. Faith doesn't quit. Faith isn't moved by emotions and feelings and all that. Faith is moved by love. El amor de Dios. Say, el amor de Dios. Faith is energized by love. 
and love is energized by faith. So, so here, here the paralytic is up in the roof and should I roll him down? No. Look at this. Look at this. And when Jesus saw their faith, their confidence in God through him, look at this. He said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven you, and put away that is the penalty, is remitted, the sense of guilt removed, and you are made upright and in right standing with God. Now he's like the other men. Get up, brother, from there you're healed. In the name of Jesus. I want to have the musicians come, but listen, listen to me. You're always going to find scribes and Pharisees in church. Not this one, outside of here. They're viewing us through internet and and they're going to see this through television. And look at this. There's always scribes and Pharisees that will always criticize a miracle. They're always looking for something wrong. But don't they know? Look at that. He got a miracle, but don't they know? I just heard him cuss a cuss word over there. You know, if he didn't say, God, forgive me. How do you know? Let me talk to the Lord. Lord, I don't think they know. We just got to change. How do you know? Let me give you something, and then we're gonna we're gonna come to this altar. Years, years, years ago, when I first got saved, man, I had so much zeal, man, I wanted to move mountain, brother, sister. I I I move move everything out of the way. I don't care what it was. And one day we're having a revival in our church. There was a girl in there that I knew. She had been married, but she had messed up. And her and her husband weren't together no more. And I knew about it. And, and I'm sitting there because he was a good friend of mine. And she hadn't been in church in a long time. And one day she went to church. And we're having a revival. And, and I'll never forget the preacher called her out. I'm sitting in the back and the preacher tells her, this week, in this revival, sister, he told her, God said, you're going to help me. You're going to help me pray for women. You're going to help me do this and that. And I'm sitting there listening to it and I'm saying, I said, no. Uh, don't look at me like that. You do the same thing. Ah, oh, Dios mío. And I'm saying, God, what's he doing? And I saw him pray for her. I saw him lay hands on her. And I saw a glow come over her. I mean, a powerful glow. And I was angry with God. And I'm walking home because I couldn't drive. I'm walking home and I'm talking to God. You know, I like to say I'm praying, but it wasn't praying. It was me and God were having a... a I was having a serious discussion. God already knew. I said, God, did you see that? I 
I said, how could he? Go like that. And I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me. And the Lord said to me, Ray, how do you know if this touch was it what she needed to turn her whole life around? And man, I just, it just pierced me. I went, I went, I went to the revival the next night early. Because I went with a purpose. I went there to ask her for forgiveness. And I did. I said, Sister, forgive me. And let me tell you something I learned from that. Is there anybody home? Being justified freely, he says, through faith, being pardoned, being made right with God, not through what we've done but to what he did. You can stand by faith and believe God and never move from that. Never move from that. I told you this morning, find the scripture that fits your need and stand on it and say, God, this is me. I'm standing there. I'm going to believe you because your word is full of power and there's nothing that will not be done because you said it would be. And you stand on it. Is there anybody home? And refuse, refuse to be moved from that. Don't let your emotions and your feelings and everything else dictate to you how you're going to do it. You let God's word do it. You stand on it. Let God's word be real. Let it be alive. I want to stand with you. I got this. We got some shingles on the floor. I should have brought some real shingles. Don't you love Jesus? You know, you know what they asked Jesus? Sister Lavina, you know what they asked him? But they asked his disciples, they says, Hey, what 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 is what is Jesus the big prophet? What's he doing sitting there with publicans and sinners? You know, the Bible says, says he came to seek and to save that which was lost. If the church can operate in love and faith, and we can take our eyes off everybody's shortcomings and faults, if we can just forget about that and, and say, God, it's, this is your child. But I need you to fill me with love. I need you to fill me with faith. I want to believe you for not just myself, but I want to believe you for everybody else. That, that's, that's my prayer. That's my prayer. One day God filled me with so much love. Love for the lost. Love for the unlovable. Love. Love. You will know what my prayer is every day, sister. I said, God, would you use this vessel, this person, I don't deserve it, God, but would you use me? Use me to reach the lost. Use me to reach the harvest. 
Use me to have faith for them to come. Use me to believe that you're going to do the impossible things in their life. And I want to tell you, God has been faithful. He's done it. Don't you want to move in faith? Don't you want to touch not just yourself, but others through the love of God and through faith? I, I've seen God, I've seen the Holy Spirit touch people that nobody else would ever touch. If I went to heaven right now, if I were to just die right here, and if I went to heaven right now, I could say that I've seen the glory of God. I've seen God touch people that no one else would ever give the time of day to. People that nobody would ever want. People that, that, that others would judge and they would say they're guilty. Let them die and go to hell. Let them miss heaven. But I've seen God touch them. I've seen murderers. I've seen robbers. I've seen the worst that you can think of. I've seen child molesters come to God. People that I didn't want to touch, I didn't want to pray for them, and the Holy Spirit says, I'm sending you there. Go and touch them. When I got there, I saw them. I saw God touch their lives and change them. And I found out later they had somebody for years that was praying for them. I, I've seen God touch people that you wouldn't believe. I saw the Lord touch a lady that had killed her children. Was never going to come out of prison. But I saw Jesus touch her life. I've seen drug addicts. I've seen alcoholics. I've seen perverted people. I've seen all kinds of people. See, because I've, I've asked God, I said, God, use me. Use me to touch him. I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I'll go to the deepest hole you send me to if you'll let me touch him for you. And I've been in some holes, brother. And I've seen faith move. I've seen faith work. When nothing else would work, I saw God work. Sitting in a little cell, a little room, me and this drug addict that had been a drug addict since he was 11 and he was in his 40s. And we're sitting so tight we can hardly move. And he asked me a question. They were so afraid he would escape. And he asked me a question in the cell. He said, he said, do you think this God you're talking about, do you think he could take this habit away from me? Do you think he could break me loose from drug addiction? In a little room like that, and I said, brother, I don't think he can. I think I know he can. And we were so tight in there that I couldn't hardly move. And I just barely touched him with my hand over here like this. I just touched him like that. I said, Jesus, you got to touch him. And I saw that man shake from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. And I saw the, the demon of drug addiction and everything be broken off his life in that little room.
I've seen the sick heal of all kinds by faith. Faith. You see, I don't want to believe for me. I want to believe for others. I want God to save your family. I believe for your family, church. I'm telling you tonight, even if you don't want to believe, I believe for them. And I know they're coming. And there's nothing that can tell me different. You'll never make me change my mind. They're coming. The Holy Spirit's about to walk into the room and, and reveal himself to them. Yes. Faith to believe God for the impossible even in your own life. Faith to believe that God can change every circumstance. Everything. Faith. Faith. Faith in God. I don't have faith in anything else, but I have faith in God. That's all I need. Faith in God. We're going to sing a song, and we're coming to this altar. And listen, only you know if the love of God is flowing through you. Only you know if faith is alive. Only you know. Anybody home? Oh, brother, I could tell you stories. I could tell you story after story after story of people. People that had needs that were so impossible. And I saw a living God walk into that place through faith in his word. Simple faith with love of God. What an awesome God. Sing, let's sing that song, sister, that says, Only believe. Only, only believe. All things, all things are possible if you can believe. Todo es posible. Si solo puedes creer, all things are possible. Sing it with us tonight. God said, if you're saved, he's going to be saved. Your house will be saved. Stand on it. Remind God. Remind him every day. Say, God, you said it. I believe it. But you lift your hands. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit of God, touch my brother tonight. Let faith grow. Let it rise. In the name of Jesus. Fill his heart on you, God. Oh, like never before, my God. Power of God. The Holy Ghost is upon you, brother. Just let him have his way. All things are possible. 
Jesus, there it goes, there it goes. Holy Ghost, do a work, Lord, that only you can do, my God. In the name of Jesus. Release that faith. Lord, I pray. I believe with my brother tonight. You said where two or three are gathered in your name. If we agree of touching anything, it shall be done. We, we agree tonight, Lord, for that boy. We agree, Lord, that you're setting him free. We agree you're bringing him into your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, I command the devil to loose him. Jesus call upon his name tell the Lord Lord give me a fresh baptism in your love fill me a fresh God with your love Let faith rise up in my spirit, God. Let fresh faith rise up in my heart. Lord, take over right now, my God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Father, let, let your love grow. Let your faith rise in her heart, God, for the impossible God. In your mighty name. In your mighty name, my God, let it be done. Let it be done, Lord. Right now. Oh, in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, let it be done. Lord, we surrender to you, my God. Have your way right now, Lord. Have your way, Father. In your mighty name, Lord. Let me operate, God, with your love, with your faith. Let me believe, Lord, for the impossible. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, give her a fresh baptism, Lord. A fresh baptism of your love. Let faith rise up in her heart, God. Oh, let faith rise up. Jesus. Lord, right now, touch my little sister right now, God. Touch her by your mighty power, your mighty hand, Lord, upon her. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, power of God. Urabo Satayaba Shando. 
Lift up your hands, Sita. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is upon you right now. Don't resist him. Don't fight him. Let him have his way right now. He loves you more than you can even imagine. Touch her, Jesus. Lord, touch her right now. Touch her, touch her, touch her. Both of you. Touch her, touch her, touch her, touch her. Touch her, Lord. Touch her. Move in her life. Move, Lord, right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Touch her, Lord. From the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Power. What happened? You believe God can heal you? Huh? You want Him to heal you? We're going to pray for you. And I believe God's going to heal that. You got pain in it right now? You believe that pain is leaving? Well, hold on to that for a minute. Lift up your hands. Both of them. Both of them. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, by faith right now. Give her a fresh baptism, Lord. Give her a fresh baptism of love and of faith right now. In the name of Jesus. Touch her, God. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, have your way right now. There he is. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my God. Yes, my God. Yes, my God. Right now. There he is. He's pouring in like with a pitcher. There it goes. Yes, my God. Yes, my God. Yes, Lord, have your way, my God. Holy Spirit, have your way. Is this sight? 